This is Whitney with the Yoga Art Space Studio in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and thank you for joining us today. Today we have a special yoga class prepared with various poses that can help bring pain relief to the sciatic nerve. Pain comes in the sciatic nerve when compression to the disc or to anywhere along the nerve causes it to be pinched. The sciatic nerve is the longest nerve in the body connecting all the way from the brain down to, to the bottoms of the feet. And so as we begin our practice here today, we'll start off in a wonderful, gentle, comfortable seated position. And as you come to this position, allow your spine to be nice and tall and allow one hand to be on each knee. We'll begin a circling motion with our torso. Inhale as the torso comes forward in the circle. Exhale as you lean back. Do two circles in one direction. Once you come back, do two circles in the opposite direction. This is to help free up the spine, loosening up the vertebrae all up and down. And now here, do two more circles clockwise and twice more counterclockwise. Following the breath each time moving at your own pace. After finishing that second cycle, rise up tall, and then we'll stack our legs like a fire log. Right leg stacks on top of the left leg. If your hip is tight, the knee may be lifted up high, so you're welcome to bring a block to support that knee, or even release that right leg in front of the other leg. Now from here, rise up with a tall spine, let the fingertips touch on the ground in front of you, and then start walking the hands forward, leaning into the stretch. You'll feel the glute and the hip muscles start to activate. Breathe here, about five slow, deep breath cycles. Five breath cycles for the majority of the poses we practice today. And so the breath flows in and out bringing calmness and serenity with it. After the five breaths, rise back upright. Switch the legs out so now the left leg is stacked on top or released in front. Again, straighten up the spine, walk the hands forward, and lean into this beautiful opening for those five breath cycles. cycles finish up, walk the hands back inward, rising tall, and then bring the legs in so that you can come up and over easily onto your hands and knees. The hands are placed right under the shoulders, the knees are right under the hips. And here we take our cat-cow spines. Exhale, lift the spine up as high as it will possibly travel, and in, drop the belly down. Exhales up, and inhales down. Just follow the speed of your own breath. Five breath cycles. Try to really reach the extreme depths in both of these directions, the farthest distance the spine can travel upward and downward. And in this way, we loosen up the spine and we free up the nerves. Now we spread the fingers wide and we tuck the toes under, hip distance apart. Start to straighten the legs up to the sky, downward facing dog. Bend one knee at a time, loosening up the legs, loosening up the low back, the vertebrae. And then from here, we lift the right heel straight up to the sky behind you. The hips open up and stack. The leg reaches very, very high up. And then as we square the hips off again, we step this foot forward and through in between the hands. Feel the feet grounded down and start to float the hands up to the sky. We try to stay on the back toes, but if your balance is iffy today, you can drop onto that back heel. And here we breathe those five deep breath cycles. The more we can sink the hips low, the deeper that stretch will be throughout the hip area. 
Exhale, bring the hands back down to the either side of this foot, stepping the foot back. And then we free up the back leg, that left leg reaching up for the sky, hip stacking, square off the hips, swing that foot forward and through, landing it in between the hands. Again, the hands hover, feel the hips sinking low, and float the arms up to the sky for our five good breath cycles. Pay extra attention to that back leg, trying to straighten it out as much as possible. The, s the straighter you can get, the deeper that depth in the stretch becomes. Exhale, the hands come down to either side, and we step this foot back for a few more breaths in the downward facing dog through the center. Feel the hips rising, the legs loosening up little by little. the shoulders stacking. As you bring the gaze forward, slightly bend the knees and walk the feet towards the hands hanging heavy. Inhale, the arms travel through the sides, meeting up at the sky. Maybe you choose a little back bend and exhale, the hands come down to the heart. Feel the feet grounding down into the earth. The feet should be about hip distance apart. And then we'll stack the right elbow on top of the left elbow, creating eagle's arms. The entire forearm tries to twist around, the palms wrapping, and then lift the elbows up in line with the shoulders, relaxing shoulders away from the ears. Pause here for a few breaths in this deep shoulder stretch before we begin to bend the knees, sinking the hips back as if we're sitting onto a chair. Feel the strength of the legs holding us upright. And then shifting the weight in into the right leg that becomes the standing leg. The left knee frees up so that it can twist around, creating a full eagle's pose. Pause here for five sturdy, strong breaths. after those five breath cycles then we begin to straighten out the legs unwind the left leg shooting it back unwind the arms and very slowly the right hand will reach down for the ground rising the back leg up behind you the hip stack the shoulders continue to open and both arms will stack one on top of the other half moon pose feel the strength of the legs Feel the tiny adjustments the body makes to find itself in balance. And after that fifth breath cycle, bend the front leg, gently land the back leg, right away coming into warrior two, and then the front elbow comes down, or the front fingertips reach down for the ground, extended side angle pose. The top arm reaches in the forward direction, stretching through the side ribs. And then the side ribs continue to rotate up to the sky, heart twisting up. Good, rise up through the center. And then cartwheel the hands down to either side of the front foot, stepping back for our downward facing dog. Holding here for our five good breath cycles. Remember the bones and the skeleton are supporting you, not the muscles. The muscles are simply receiving that stretch. Gazing forward, step, walk, or jump to the front of the mat. And then reach the hands up through either side. Hands meeting together at the heart after the exhale. We prepare for the second side. The feet are hip distance apart. This time the left elbow stacks on top of the right elbow. Creating eagle's arms. Feel the shoulders stretch for a good breath in and out here. And then we prepare for the, the fierce pose, sitting back as if we're in a chair. Remember to slightly tuck the tailbone under, protecting the low back. Knees are stacked over the ankles. Shift the weight over to the left leg. That's the standing leg. And then the right leg wraps all the way around. Maybe even the toes can wrap around the calf. Hold for five breaths in this eagle posture.
After the fifth breath, unwind the legs, shooting that right leg straight back behind, unwind the arms, the left fingertips land on the ground to the outside corner of that left foot. The hips continue to stack, the shoulders stack, finding lift here, lifting the back leg up to at least a 90 degree angle if possible. After that fifth breath cycle, bend the standing leg, gently land the right foot behind you, resuming our warrior two position. And then the front elbow goes down onto the thigh or the front fingertips reach down for the ground, either version of our extended side angle, feeling the heart opening up and simply accommodating this pose for our current level of flexibility. Once again, when we finish our five breath cycles, we rise up through that strong warrior two, cartwheel the hands down to either side of the front foot, step both legs back behind you, and then we prepare here for our dolphin pose. Drop down onto both elbows, and then lift up, straightening the hips up to the sky as if we're coming into a down dog just with the elbows dropped. Walk the feet in as high as your flexibility will allow. Staying here for three to four breaths, maybe those five breath cycles before dropping down. And afterward, we take a cobra pose. The hands plant under the shoulders and we press up into the back bend. Remember not to allow any low back pain. And of course, after our cobra pose, we come into a child pose to decompress the spine after that deep back bend. Releasing the head down to the ground, releasing the hips. Rising upright, we swing the legs in front of us taking a cobbler's pose, both feet are scooting inward, the knees opening out. Perhaps you choose the version with the hands planted behind you, the heart opening, or if you know you'd like to take the forward fold, reach the hands for the feet, rise the spine tall, and then slowly lean forward. The forward fold in this cobbler pose opens up the hips very deeply. And as the weight of the head relaxes down, that weight pulls on the rest of the spine, all of those muscles all along the back, pulling them into a beautiful stretch. As we gently rise upward, release the feet from the cobbler's pose and we'll set ourselves up for a wonderful sacral stretch. The right leg will come parallel to the front of the mat, the left leg tucked behind, forming two edges of a square. And we prepare for a twist. The left hand reaches for the outside of the right thigh. The other hand is behind us. As we move into the twist, we lift that back hip up and then rotate back forward, setting that hip back down onto the ground. Do this rotation five times, twisting up and back. And only after the fifth breath cycle, the fifth rotation, that's when we stay into this pose for a few extra breaths, filling the sacrum and filling the spine loosen up. One of these sides, if you have sciatic pain currently, will feel so good, the, so much opening going on. And so if that's your side, feel free to stay there a little bit longer. When you're ready for the second side, we switch the legs out, left and front, right tucked behind, the right arm reaching for the thigh, and the left arm is behind you, taking those five rotations, lifting that back hip up, looking behind, and slowly rotating through the entire spine, coming back through the front, up and down, back and forth, a few more times. And again, when you reach that fifth cycle, pause here for a few extra breaths. Again, if this is the side that has that huge amount of relief from that sciatic pain, stay here just a little bit longer. The reason this stretch feels so good, this twisting, is because it loosens up the sacrum. 
So now with the sacrum loosened up, we want to make sure to reset it back into a wonderful centered spot. And so bring both legs in front of you, hug your torso tightly against the thighs, and then begin walking the heels forward only to the point where you do not release the hug. Relax the head forward. Perhaps you'll be higher up with the knees, perhaps almost flat down to the ground. Just hug and feel the stretch all the way along the low back. Stay there for the five breath cycles again. And when you finish, come all the way down onto the ground, hugging the right knee into the chest. Here we'll allow ourselves to pull this right knee into a twist over to the left. The right arm opens out to the right. And as we hold here for these few deep breath cycles, we enjoy that twisting. When you're ready to release, hug the right knee in one more time and then switch the legs, allowing the left knee to come in and it twists over to the right. Releasing, enjoying this twist. Bring the hips back down, hug this left knee in, and here we release all the way down to the ground for our comfortable Shavasana pose. Feel the back long, feel the body resting. Stay here for as long as you have time today, just breathing. How much can you allow your body to release? And how much can you envision light healing your sciatic pain, healing the low back? I thank you so much for joining me today. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.